Today we're going to explore the guts and the innards of the titanium Flux Core 125 versus the Century uh, Flux Core 90. And we're going to see if we can finally put to rest the theory or the thoughts that some people have that these are basically the same machine in different clothing or they were made at the same factory or they're basically just the same machine. But it's going to surprise you. Stay tuned. Okay, so right here in front of us, we've got the titanium flux core 125 on this side. And on this side, we've got the Century uh, 90 amp flux core machine. Um, so let's start with the ground cable. Uh, this is the ground clamp uh, this, that they uh, supply with it. Uh, as you can see, the titaniums, it's a lot smaller. Uh, the centuries is a little bit bigger, a little bit more heavy duty, and you can see that there is a pretty good difference in the size um, or the length of them. Uh, basically, they both feel about the same, but uh, um, this one's been burned burned through a couple of times, but that's okay. But they're they're you know they're basically the same. Uh, I won't discount one or, or the other, but they are just little cheap stamp metal ground clamps that you get with any other cheap machine. Okay, when you open up the cover, they both have a uh, chart on the inside that's included. Um, but you can see right here that I don't see any difference whatsoever on these two wire feeds. The only difference that I did find when I open it up is this is the one for the century. It just plugs straight into a PC board and this is the one for the titanium and it does have this little coil that the wires are wrapped around. Uh, I'm not an electronics genius and I don't know what that does but uh, it obviously does something. Now, if you look at the motors, uh, this is what I found interesting. The motors are, this is the one for the Century, and you can see it doesn't really say a whole lot, but they are, uh, they are both 12 volt DCs, one amp, and the uh, feeding speed is two to 11, inches per minute. The one for the titanium, uh, it's, it's actually made by a company called uh, ePower and it says executive standard uh, but it is also a 24 volt uh, 1 amp and the wire speed is the same 2 to 11 inches per minute and it does actually say on here that it is made in China. Uh, this one does not say, but if we put them side by side, um, they're pretty close to the same. Um, but if, if it was the same motor, I would imagine that it would have the same labels on there. All right, uh, on the titanium, it does have the little uh, switch here for the cold wire feed. Uh, when you're spooling up the wire, you can hit this button and it'll kill the circuit going to the wire and it doubles the speed of the uh, uh, motor, of the drive motor, so that it'll feed it through the uh, gun a lot faster. The Sentry doesn't have it. Uh, this is the Century spool holder. Uh, you can see it's a little bit different from the titaniums. The titanium's got this long bolt. It's got one edge knocked out, mil uh, milled out. Um, the uh, Century, it just has, has a thing that goes down on it and turn and twist. But um, that's pretty much where the similarities stop. Um, let's, 
Let's tilt these over and get into the inside. Okay, so <clears throat> I did spare you the boredom of having to sit there and watch me take this thing apart. But uh, um, this is the Sentry. Uh, as you can see, the Sentry comes down the, um, the uh, ground cable, goes in, and then it goes on to this, um, I want to say it's some kind of heat sink, but then it's got a, a, a laminated iron core. So I really don't know what's going on there. And then it goes over here through a wire over to this heat sink. On the titanium, uh, the ground comes and it goes on this heavy bus bar and goes into this big giant thing, which is much bigger than the Century. And then it's got this solid metal bus that goes over to, to uh, this heat sink. Uh, they both have two capacitors. I can't get in there to see what the difference in the two are. Uh, the Century does have this big transformer, um, which is lacking from the titanium unless they're using this as the transformer. Um, so I don't, I don't know, uh, I know that's some kind of transformer, uh, and this is pretty heavy gauge copper windings on this versus what would probably be on, on this transformer. Um, again, this is the uh, titanium, and it's got these two heat sinks right here, and they look like they're just going straight down to the board and then this one has uh, some kind of big, I'm, I'm imagining that's some kind of power uh, amplifier um, uh, IC or integrated circuit that's, that's on, on that uh, heat sink. Over here on the Century, these two are sitting on top of something down in there that I can't quite see. But, uh, and it does have an extra one over here, which is sitting on top of another chip. But you can see this is the inside of the Century. And, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot, whole lot to it. Uh, the, um, the power cable going down the uh, gun is attached to this little lug right here. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I didn't see any markings, any labels or anything on this Century board. Um, there's some numbers in there, but that's, you know, it doesn't say anything on it. The um, titanium board, um, you can see, let me see if I can get in here and show you, um, let me grab a light. On this titanium board, you can see right, right there, let me get this wire out of the way. You can see right there, it does say inverter FC 125 main. Um, so that's, I imagine, inverter flux core 125 main board. Um, let me show you the back side of it. You know, the back side of it is pretty much the same as the back side of the century I mean not exact not exactly this one's got a lot more of these little tiny little capacitors and chips uh, uh, more electronics on the uh, titanium board um, but what I liked about the titanium insides was it did have this solid 
metal, I imagine that's aluminum um, bus bar that goes from this big giant whatever it is where the uh, uh, that's that's the ground cable goes to that goes through this goes over here it's connected to this heat sink coming off these capacitors uh, where the century uh, its ground cable just goes to the beginning of this little smaller still kind of a, a similar design but I really don't know what that is and it does have laminated core uh, so it's probably catching eddy currents you know I don't know but it's got a flexible wire going over to this lug onto the heat sinks but uh, either way you can look at the insides of these and you can compare the boards uh, there's another little transformer there but you can compare the boards and you can quickly see that they definitely are not the same um, so really the only uh, really only the the uh, the only similarities uh, even the fans are different um, it does have a manufacturer date on the board and they're within a, a year of each other but uh, again the only difference that I saw or, or or the only thing that I saw that was the same was the um, the drive rollers but then when I pulled them out I saw that the titanium had this little coil on here but really other than that um, they're they're completely different machines um, inside and out uh, the um, they're the same width they're within a half an inch of each other in, in height and lengthwise they're both the same except the titanium's got this slanted front but uh, other than that see even the shape of this where these dials are on the front even the shape of that is different because this has this little notch in right here and it's got the cold feed switch here on the titanium um, so Y'all draw your own conclusions. Uh, to me, uh, from what I'm looking at here, they are two totally different machines. And, um, you know, just, you know, a cursory look at the inside from a guy that doesn't know a whole lot. Uh, the titanium just seems to be more robustly built uh, it is a little heavier, but uh, looks like it's got better quality parts. Um, you know, and the bus bars are better quality on the on the titanium. So, draw your own conclusion. So I don't know. You know, come to your own conclusions. I was I was really hoping that I could have put this to rest. Uh, whether. Uh, these two machines are basically the same. Uh, they are not. Um, different parts, different looking parts. The boards are different. The motors are different. Uh, the chips are different. The heat sinks are different. The wiring configuration is different. Um, again, the only thing that I saw, um, both of them have a 150 uh, amp rated gun. But the only thing that I saw that was the same or similar was the uh, uh, drive rollers. They are 100% identical on the top and the bottom and the front and sides. The motors are different though. Uh, so I imagine there's probably a factory that's just sitting here popping out 500 of these a day. Um, and they sell them to different manufacturers of uh, these little flux core machines. Um, so, you know, 
I don't know, you know, take this with a grain of thought. Leave a comment down below what, what you think. What are your uh, observations? Um, maybe there's something, you know, I'm not seeing, but uh, these are two totally different machines. Um, you know, obviously one's 125 amps and the other one's 90 amps. Um, to me, I think the Century welds a little better than the, the titanium. Um, that's why I'm really eager to get my hands on one of the new Lincoln uh, 90i flux cores. Um, because it's supposed to be a vast improvement over the Century now that Lincoln bought them. But I want to thank my friend Eric for donating this uh, uh, Century 90 amp machine for us to cannibalize. Uh, this, this old titanium I've had for sitting in the closet for a couple of years uh, thinking I could, you know, pull some, some parts off of it if I ever needed to. But uh, hey, I appreciate y'all watching. Uh, have a good weekend. And uh, don't forget to watch the uh, on uh, December 15th, I'm gonna have the drawing for the uh, free titanium flux core machine that I'm giving away. If you haven't already entered, uh, go to that video, watch the video, follow the instructions. You have to like the, that video. You have to subscribe to the channel and you don't have to, but you can leave a comment saying, you know, what you would use it for. That's not gonna sway the, the random drawing in any, any kind of way. But uh, um, one thing I've noticed on that video is there's, there's uh, more people leaving comments than there are people liking it. And remember, you have to like it and subscribe and you have to leave a comment that says liked and subscribed. Uh, those are the official rules that YouTube makes me makes me state for any kind of drawing that I have. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Y'all have a great weekend.